It only took three months, but it's finally here, guys. The Raspberry Pi 5. And today we're going to be unboxing it, checking out some of its specifications, and comparing it to its predecessor to see if it's even worth it. You guys hungry? Let's dig into this thing. Hey guys, welcome back to TechLogic Lounge where we discuss all things IT. We check out new tech, we talk about IT career fields, we go over home lab stuff, I do how to's and many other things. So the Raspberry Pi 5 came out on October 23rd of 2023 and it only took me three months to get even though I placed an order on the same day. In this video we're going to go over the specifications of the new Raspberry Pi 5, we're going to unbox it and we're going to compare it to its predecessor to see if it's even worth picking up. Now if you're thinking about getting into the IT career field, you have your own home lab, or you just like looking at unboxings and seeing new tech, definitely make sure you subscribe. When I hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away an orange pie, and I do all kinds of things tech. But anyways, let's go ahead and actually check out the specifications of this Raspberry Pi 5. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is definitely an upgrade to its predecessor, and some of its specifications include a Broadcom 2.4 GHz quad-core 64-bit ARM CPU, and it has cryptography extension support, as well as a 512 kilobyte L2 cache and a 2 megabyte shared L3 cache. It has a video core GPU with support for dual monitors at 4K 60p and it has HDR support. It comes with DDR4 SD RAM and the current model support 4 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes. The one I ordered was the 8 gigabyte version. It has a dual band 802.11 AC Wi Fi NIC and it also supports Bluetooth 5.0. It has a micro SD card with support for high speed SDR 104 mode with higher read and write speeds than its predecessor. It has two USB 3.0 ports supporting simultaneous 5 gigabits per second operation and it also has two USB 2.0 ports. It has a gigabit ethernet NIC with support for PoE, power over ethernet. It has two four lane camera and display transceivers. It has a PCIe 2.0 expansion interface that you can use to attach things like an M2 drive. It has its Raspberry Pi standard 40 pin header. It has its own real time clock support powered by an external battery, which means it can keep time without an external resource. And this one finally includes a power button which uh, some of its competitors already have, which is great to see it finally catching up to that. Now the Raspberry Pi 5 comes in two different models currently, the 4 gigabyte and the 8 gigabyte, and the 4 gigabyte is going to run you about 60 bucks, and the 8 gigabyte is going to run you about 80 bucks. Now good luck finding anywhere that's actually available right now. I'm seeing most of them ship about a month or two out, specifically the 4 gigabyte being a little bit more available sooner than the 8 gigabyte. So that's something you want to keep in mind. However, if you can't wait for it, I'd recommend just going with the 8 gigabyte and also looking into getting a package because I've noticed most vendors will provide you with sooner availability if you decide to buy one of their packages that includes like a case and a fan or something like that. So I ended up opting for the 8 gigabyte model and I actually went ahead and got a combo with the case and the fan from Pimeroni and it ended up coming up to about 130 to 140 bucks and that's what we're going to be unboxing now. But let's actually go ahead and get into the unboxing. All right, so we got the box here. Now I did go ahead and actually cut the tape because I tried recording this a second ago and I was struggling. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and actually open it. And it looks like we got our case here. We've got the actual Raspberry Pi 5 itself, 8 gigabyte. And we also have our active cooler, which is something I opted for as well. I forgot about that. Let's go ahead and move this out the way. We got our three boxes here. And we'll go ahead and start with the active cooler first to actually check this baby out. Here's a little picture of the back of it. Go ahead and open this up. Pull this out. I think that's it in there. So it looks like we got a heat sink with an additional fan. That's gonna be installed on top of the Raspberry Pi 5 itself. And it looks like it's already got the thermal paste attached to where this thing is supposed to connect to. All right, put that aside for now. Now we've got the case. Go ahead and open this up. There's the specifications on the back if you want to check that out. So this is pretty cool. We've got the Raspberry Pi logo there. One of the sides. We got the back where you can actually see the power LED display light, activity light. We've got our actual power button here. And then some HDMI ports here. And then we've got our RJ45, our NIC connectors, uh, and our USB ports as well here. And actually just take this off by popping it up. And you can see we've got another case fan in here already. Man, should be able to take that off. And these should be our heat sinks if I remember correctly. Okay. 
Yep, looks like we got our heat sinks here. Goes back in here for a second. Get to those in a second. Now, let's actually get into opening up this here. Here are the specifications on the back. Pause that if you want to look at it. Go ahead and actually open this baby up. Come on. Ripping this damn thing open like a savage. My bad. Check out the documentation in a second, but here's the actual board for the Raspberry Pi 5. Looks nice. So we've got here the PCIe uh, 2.0 expansion that we can actually use to attach an M2 drive. Got our 40 pin connectors up here. Got our USB-C uh, port here for power. Some HDMI ports here. And then we have our actual RJ45 ports and our USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports as well. The layout is a little bit different. Some of the ports have been configured uh, slightly representing the Raspberry Pi 3 days. And you can see some of the chips have been actually oriented a little bit more so that they're a little bit more efficient uh, inside the case. I think we also got some documentation in here which will actually show us how to get this thing set up. Not gonna go through all that right now. But anyways, let's go ahead and actually get into putting this thing together. All right, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I actually had to go ahead and look at the documentation for this shit online to try and figure out what some of the stuff is because uh, the instructions that came with it are useless. So this here is the heat sink that you would use if you don't have the active cooler set up, but we do, so I'm not gonna be using it. And these are the actual feet that go on the bottom of the case. And we also have this case fan here, which I went over. We're not actually gonna be using it because apparently it doesn't fit if you try and use it with the active cooler. So we can go ahead and take this out. So that just comes out like that, just pops out. Leave that there. And we can go ahead and throw these feet on real quick since they're here. All right, so I'll put those on. Good, just little rubber feet. And now we're gonna go ahead and actually put this active cooler on. So we've got our pie board here and we've got the cooler. And from here, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is what the do you want to do? Five minutes later. So you want to have this lined up like this, right? So you see these little springs here? These springs that are on both sides are going to go into these holes here. So that hole and that hole there. No shit, Sherlock. And here are the heat sinks that we need to go ahead and take off. Or that we need to go ahead and take the covering off of so that they can actually fit on these chips that are on the board. Go ahead and do that. That's right. There. There. And then from here, we just want to go ahead and push them into the hole. Like that. One. And then the other one over here. Got that on there. And then we just need to connect this to the connector, which should reach. I'm gonna make sure I keep my damn hot dog fingers out of the damn camera. I promise you guys I never have this much trouble getting stuff into holes. I was gonna have space all up in the camera too. I'm struggling here, man. I am struggling. So that's the top, I think. All right, I think I figured it out now. I'm actually checking it out here. So this is a little cap that you need to remove to actually put this active cooler uh, connector in. So let's see if I can get that out. Oh, who thought that was a good idea? All right, so we're trying to get it into this hole here. Man, that was ridiculous. You know, they need to get that documentation a little bit better or at least give some instructions or something because man i was struggling all right anyway so we got the active cooler connected now let's go ahead and put this thing into the case but luckily you don't need any tools for this stuff these holes line up with these holes at the bottom here just go ahead and do that righty so that's in there now 
sports somewhat aligned. Okay. Now, I'll go ahead and throw this on. And you should see it somewhat line up with those holes. And then we've got that. And I noticed this thing is actually covering up the power button. Oh no, no, that is the power button and LEDs. You stupid motherfucker! So you click this and it'll power it on. Okay, cool, cool. Alright, so that's on. And we just throw this on. Alright, and you can see here there's a little crease in between the, uh, a little gap in between the top of the case and the rest of it. That's it. It's all on. Man, this looks pretty sleek, I like it. It's actually a lot cooler than the uh, standard black one I have for the Pi 4. And if you haven't seen my Pi 4 video, make sure you go ahead and check that one out as well so you can see whether or not you want to get the 4 or the 5. And here are our ports. That's about it. So that was the actual unboxing of the Pi 5, but should you even actually pick it up? Is it worth the additional money that it costs and the wait time as opposed to picking up a Raspberry Pi 4? Well, I did some digging around and I looked at some of the different comparisons between the two and some significant things uh, that you're going to want to consider when you're trying to decide. Of course, it's going to be price. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is about $20 to $30 more expensive than the Pi 4, obviously depending on the different options you decide to select when you buy the thing. In terms of performance, the Raspberry Pi 5 actually does have a stronger CPU. It's about two to three times quicker on paper of course in reality that's sometimes the case uh, I've noticed that some of the different benchmarks uh, have it ranging between 2 and 1.5 times faster uh, RAM speeds are theoretically faster as well the they both have DDR4 however the Pi 5 has a DDR4 4020 or 4267 versus the DDR4 3200 as the RAM that the Pi 4 has uh, graphics, graphics power is significantly better on the Pi 5 as well. And if you're going to use the Raspberry Pi 5 uh, as a daily driver, it's also been seen and noted that the Raspberry Pi 5 does a lot better with multitasking and doesn't chug as bad as it does uh, with the Pi 4 when you're trying to use 4K as well as dual monitor support. Another thing to note is the USB 3.0 ports have their own dedicated 5 gigabit bandwidth for each port as opposed to the shared bandwidth between the ports on the Raspberry Pi 4. And one big key thing is going to be that the Raspberry Pi 5 has that additional PCIe expansion interface that you can use to attach all kinds of things to it. Specifically what I'm thinking about is an M2 drive. The Raspberry Pi 5 has its own dedicated real-time clock so it'll actually keep time without needing an external resource. And most importantly, if you ask me, it's got a power button. I think that's awesome. It should have had one before and with the 4 and I would honestly think the 3 as well, but the 5 finally got it right. Now the Raspberry Pi 5 on paper does consume more resources, um, however when you're using it just for standard functions, uh, maybe just running services like Docker or something like that, for the most part the 5 and the 4 both perform and consume at the same level. But when you start doing overclocking, obviously you're going to see a little bit more cons power consumed from the Raspberry Pi 5. Now should you even bother picking up the Raspberry Pi 5 and is it worth waiting for? Depends on what you want to use it for. Honestly, if you're looking for those capabilities like adding additional PCIe peripherals like an M2 drive and you're looking for better performance for overclocking if you're really trying to push this thing, then maybe you want to go for the Pi 5. However, if you're just going to be using it for standard services, maybe throwing Docker on it, something like that, you might just want to stick with the 4 because you're probably not going to be utilizing everything to its full potential. However, if you've got the time and the money and you don't mind waiting, I would recommend the Pi 5. It does have some quality of life features and obviously it's going to be supported longer as well perform a lot better when you're looking at things that are going to require a lot of uh, throughput. But for me, I'm not 100% sure on what I'm going to use this thing for. I like to actually get recommendations from you guys to see what you want me to cover. I can do something like an arcade machine, maybe a Plex server, Docker with uh, additional services. I don't know. You guys let me know. But that's the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, we went ahead and checked out the specifications of it. We did an unboxing of it. In my next video, we're going to go ahead and set this up with whatever you guys have recommended in the comments below. I appreciate you guys for watching the video and sticking around. Drop a comment let me know what you guys want me to cover next as well as what you want me to go ahead and actually do on this Raspberry Pi 5. And make sure you subscribe because I'll be giving an orange pie away once I hit 100 subscribers. I appreciate you guys and you take it easy. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.